Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Day Spotlight. Today, we've got a special racer on hand. We're going to go out to actually High Point, North Carolina, where he's still attending school at High Point University, where we catch Trans Am driver Connor Mozak. Connor, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. So, you know, let's get right into this. Um, you you were racing in the Pirelli Trans Am series with Scott Legacy Racing this year, and you know most everything that you've done was legend cars to late models, and then you make this transition into the uh, into the Trans Am car, getting a lot of road racing under your belt. What's that been like so far? So far, it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the year. We're gonna have the tracks we get to go to or are some of the best in the country. So, um, you know, they're all new to me. Uh, there's only, VAR is the only one left on the schedule that, that I have been to already. So, um, but just, you know, it's been good. We've had a lot of speed, uh, unfortunately some bad luck here the last couple of races. Uh, it's been, been getting better. Um, but hopefully, you know, we've got that behind us now and, and we can have some uh, good finishes going through the rest of the year. Well, you had a great run when you went to Sebring. And, of course, everybody knows that Sebring is, again, one of those legendary tracks. Even though it's really old and really rough, I know the last time I was down there, it was hard for me to comprehend that all the racing that goes on there and really how rough that track was. You had a great run going there, and, and then you you had an incident. Can you walk us through that real quickly? Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, it's definitely a rough place, um, so it's, it tests the equipment. Um, Scotty had a, a upper control arm break. Uh, he had some contact earlier in the race, so it, that didn't help that. But um, I think we qualified sixth, and on the restart there was a wreck, and we had to miss it. So I, I ended up uh, falling back to like ninth or tenth there on the first lap. Um, but we just slowly worked our way forward. Um, the car just kept getting better and better every lap. Um, then eventually we drove. I think we got back to fifth, and then uh, had a caution. On the restart, worked our way back up to third. Um, we just kind of was riding in third, slowly reeling in. Uh, Skeen was in second. Uh, we were just a little bit faster than him. I feel like I was kind of just biding my time. We had a long uh, race to go, so um, just was hoping to catch him at the end. I don't think we had anything for the leader. Um, but unfortunately, with like three laps to go, the car started getting really loose on me, and then the right rear tire blew out uh, at this corner called Bishops, which is like the fastest left-hander on the track. I think it blew out going like 130 or so, and there's a wall, like no room to go anywhere. So ended up crashing pretty hard there, unfortunately. But uh, it was it was a pretty good run before that. Yeah, I started to say that was, uh, looking at the car, that was an extremely hard hit that you took there. So yeah. going from Sebring, heading back to your home track, let's say, and the Charlotte Roval, um, you know, I've not had the opportunity to get out and ride around on that Roval road course. So what is it like? I mean, I know that that's, you know, a, a much tighter situation than you were at Sebring, a lot smoother, but then you had the banks and everything to play into effect. So tell us what it was like racing on the Roval. Yeah, it was cool to be home and um, we had a lot of friends and family come out. So that was really nice. Um, but the track itself, it's pretty slick. There's not a lot of grip. It's a really tough infield portion. Um, you're really just on the edge the whole way through there to be fast. Uh, with banking's a lot of fun. Uh, those cars really, you know, are planted in the track there. Um, so, I, you know, I enjoyed the track. Um, the race, you know, we actually had a pretty up and down weekend. We were really fast. Uh, I think Sam and I were about a second and a half faster than everybody else. Um, but just had a right front tire blow and hit the wall pretty hard in the, in the banking um, in the first practice. And then uh, had the throttle hang on me in the next practice. So we missed qualifying. So we had to start from the tail, um, but we were able to drive back to the front. Um, just didn't have enough time really hope for a caution to get, get a shot at the leaders, but didn't end up getting that. But uh, I was pretty happy with the third place for, for what happened uh, you know, the rest of the weekend. I started to say for everything that kind of went on to come home in a third place, I would think that's almost like it's not actually winning the race, but I think from a mental aspect, it has to be like a race win for you. I mean, that's uh, 
that that's quite a rebound. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, obviously I wish we had that opportunity to see what we could have done with, with the two leaders, but um, yeah, with, without that happening, I don't think there's really much else we could do. Right. So now all of a sudden let's switch and go to, again, I, I don't know if there's any racing tracks that you go to that aren't really considered iconic race courses because then you head to road Atlanta and you had a great showing there. So give us some highlights of the road Atlanta race. Yeah, Road Atlanta is one of my favorite tracks. The elevation changes are wild there. Um, it's a lot of fun. So, um, you know, we weren't quite as fast as we wanted to be through the weekend. Um, you know, we had a, a pretty new car, so it, it's, um, you know, the frame's new. So we, we had a lot of bottoming out issues uh, in some spots, um, but we were able to work on it and keep getting it better and better. And, and by the time we uh, started the race, it was about the best that it had been all weekend. And uh, we were able to drive forward. I think we qualified eighth um six or eight i can't remember but um we got to the top five pretty quickly um and just kind of rode around there I was able to make a pass uh for fourth with like you're probably about halfway um and then we, we were kind of fourth place car i don't think we had anything for the guys in front of us but um just rode around there and, and we were able to come home with a fourth place finish now for someone that doesn't know tell us what is the top speed at road atlanta uh, I think we hit uh, just over 160 there in the back stretch, like 164, 165. Um, a couple guys were 166 uh, if you're in the draft there. So, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty wild. It's blind until you come down. It's hard to, you know, you got to really know where you are on the track to hit your braking zone right. You can't really see. Uh, there's a lot of blind blind corners there. Uh, that's hall in the mail there. So yeah. <laughs> I know you had talked about a lot of elevation changes. So for people that may not know, compare the elevation changes that you experienced at Road Atlanta to what you're going to experience when you get to Sonoma. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, the turn 11 there at um, Road Atlanta, I think it drops like three or four stories or something like that coming over the bridge. Uh, you pick up a lot of speed and you can't see anything coming under the bridge. Um, so it definitely takes some getting used to, to know where to put the car, uh, and commit to staying in the throttle. Um, so that's probably, uh, you know, whenever I first went through there, it was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, but as far as Sonoma, I've never been there. Um, it seems I've heard the elevation is uh, pretty crazy. I've, I've done some laps in the simulator, but that never seems to do that justice. Um, so I'm pretty excited about going out there. Now, Sonoma, that, that's where the corkscrew's at, right? Where you come over and then you just kind of wind down through the... Uh, that's Laguna Seca. Oh, that's Laguna Seca. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have that the week after, though, so we get to experience uh, both of those. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so you brought up the simulator. How much does the simulator help you in preparation for these tracks? The road road courses especially, it's been really helpful. Um, you know, with not knowing any of these courses and, and being a little disadvantaged there compared to the rest of the field, Um you know, learning the track as best as you can before you get there just saves uh, a lot of time in the car. Um, you know, you don't, if you don't know the track at all, when you get there, you kind of waste the whole first session, just figuring out where you need to put the car. Um, and then you can go and work on speed and in the car. So, you know, showing up to the track, having, you know, 90% of an idea what the track's like, um, it really shortens the learning curve, uh, which has been huge for me. Um, you know, like all these tracks we've been able to go to, we pretty much, have gotten right up to speed. Um, obviously there's some things that are going to be different from the real life track in the simulator um, and things like the elevation change. You don't really get that uh, experience in the simulator, but um, yeah, it's it, overall, I think it's a huge help on these road courses. Yeah. And you've got two really great coaches. Um, it, it's very seldom. Do you get a chance to work with the father and then the son? Right. So, <laughs> If they had to go out and buckle up today and get in a car, which one of the two of them do you think would win? I don't know. I haven't seen a senior in a car, but um, I've heard he still can get after it. So I'd like to see that. But um, I don't know. It'd be it'd be a close one, I, I would think. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good – that'd be a great challenge race to be able to see. So of the tracks that you've got left on your schedule, which one are you looking most forward to um, to going at and racing? I mean, I'm looking forward to going to all of them, but I would have to say that um, I think the Nashville street race is going to be pretty cool. Um, 
going there with IndyCar, uh, and then it's the only street course on the circuit. So I think, um, you know, something unique, something new, nobody else has been there before. Um, so that's, you know, that's the only track that I'll have an equal opportunity going to there. Um, but I think, you know, Nashville's a cool town and being, you know, driving through the downtown area and, and the race cars is going to be a lot of fun. So my question is, are you going to have country music on the, on the radio inside the car when you race? <laughs> if there was a way to do that, I probably would. It'd be, it'd be, uh, it'd be fun. <laughs> that, that gets you a lot of fans there. Yeah, so, maybe in practice. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Nashville is a great town. So um, that's pretty cool. I may, I may have to try to come and check that race out. I think that would be interesting. I know when they, uh, they race through the streets of St. Louis, when, when I lived up there, it was crazy. Some of the stuff that they had to do up there, mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, um, welding the manhole covers down and all of this stuff, you wouldn't never think that, that those cars would create that type of suction to where they said that they could actually suck a manhole cover right out of the hole. So yeah, I didn't know that, but that's, uh, <laughs> Hopefully. All right, so <laughs> let's switch a little bit because you've got some ARCA races coming up. And uh, I think you've got four currently on your schedule right now. But you're going to go to Dover International Raceway and the Monster Mile in May. Are you looking forward to that? Oh, yeah. It's a uh, it's pretty daunting first track to go to. Um, but, you know, I'm up to the challenge. I think it'll be... Uh, a fun track and uh, just looking forward to seeing what we can do there. Yeah. I, I would say that, uh, you know, for your first ARCA race, man, that's a tough place to be able to go. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be able to adjust. I do a lot of SIM testing on that. Not sure that's going to simulate coming out of turn four. I've heard that from so many drivers that, you know what, that's an eye opener, but uh, good luck to that. Now, one thing that you do have coming up that I'm sure you're looking forward to because you're getting ready to graduate. I am, just a couple more weeks. So, you know, for people that don't know, Connor attends High Point University out of High Point, North Carolina. Um, if you've never been to that school or never checked it out, you can go online and check it out. If you're ever out there in person, you know, I don't care if you're looking to go to that school or you're old like me and you're thinking, you know, college, you've got to go on that campus. What an amazing school. So what has it been like to go to High Point and knowing that you're going to be a High Point graduate? Uh, it's been a great almost four years now. Um, you know, it's a great campus. They've done a great job. Um, the, the classes are great. I've always had uh, great professors pretty much all four years for all my classes. Um, so, I mean, there's really not much I can uh, complain about. Um, and they're really flexible with my schedule, which is really nice for racing. So I've been able to balance both of those. Um, but I am looking forward to graduating and, and moving on. So um, almost here. <laughs> All right. Well, Connor, again, thanks for being with us this evening. For any of you race fans that are out there that are not following Connor, make sure you go to ConnorMozakRacing.com while you're there. Make sure to check out his fan zone. Sign up for his newsletter. Make sure to follow him on all the social media platforms. And Connor, again, congratulations on the upcoming graduation. Good luck at Sonoma. And I'll really be looking forward to that first ARCA race at the Monster Mile. So, again, thank you for being with us. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. All right. So there you got it. Connor Mozak, up-and-coming great driver. He's been working with Warren Rainier through Rainier Racing Development. You're going to be hearing a lot from this young man. So, again, thanks all of you for tuning in tonight. And we'll be back with you in two weeks for the next Race Face Driver Spotlight. Have a great night, everyone.